Hi, this is Scott Shepard of Scott Shepard Photography, and this is a brief tutorial that is an excellent tool, uh, or <laughs> that introduces you to an excellent tool, especially if you do macro photography like I do. Uh, in fact, the desktop um, that you're looking at, which are uh, Kennedy half dollar coins, may look like one macro photo, but it's actually nine photos that are layered, and I use Photoshop to do that. Now, like everything else I do, I start in Aperture. I took nine um, photos of these coins, and I'm just going to show you um, what the sequence looks like. Oh, by the way, a word about white balance. I always shoot with a gray card, or I try to always shoot with a gray card, uh, because my camera doesn't always get the right light, <laughs> the light right. Um, and in Aperture, it's not hard to uh, fix the white balance if you have a gray card shot. Okay, so let's take a look at the sequence. I took nine photos. Now, you'll notice instantly that my aperture was f8 on this. Um, the, the catch is, is that in macro work, even when you're using a relatively small aperture, you have a fairly narrow depth of field. And at f8, uh, using my 100 millimeter uh, macro lens, uh, the depth of field is fairly narrow. So in photo one, I focused on the... Uh, middle of the eagle more or less in the first row shot two a little bit higher on the coin shot three shot four shot five shot six shot seven eight and nine i could have taken more photos but uh, because this is a demonstration for use in class i didn't want my students to have to uh, try to layer more than nine photos and then what i did was that i exported those uh, photos, uh, in this case as 50% uh, JPEG size. Now I was working with JPEG to begin with just because I wanted the workflow to be a little bit less cumbersome for the computer. And I have put those into a folder. Now the magic begins. I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to Photoshop and uh, if I go up to File Scripts and I didn't know about this until a student of mine in my first year named Liz taught me about this, and it's a great trick. You can do this manually, but it's really labor intensive. There is a script in uh, Photoshop CS6 called Load Files into Stack, and that's what we're going to do. And we're going to go, we're going to go find the folder that they're in. It happens to be right here. And um, it's important that we do this sequentially, six, 763 through 771, that's nine photos. And I'm going to click open. Uh, I could check this, uh, but I'm gonna leave it unchecked, at least for the time being. And now it's going to open all nine of those photos, and it's going to put them into one uh, file a stacked file and if you take a look at the uh, layers over here there are now now nine layers here uh, from 763 to 771 uh, this kept them in sequence and this is an essential trick uh, make sure that they end up in sequence here if they're not you can rearrange them now we're going to highlight all of those layers um, and now we're going to go up to edit and we're going to go to Auto Align Layers. And we have a variety of choices here, but we're going to just keep it uh, here on the default, which is Auto. And I'll let the software go to work. And what it's doing is it's looking for features within each of these nine uh, layers that seem to be similar. Okay, and it just auto align them. Now making sure that the layers are all selected. I haven't done anything over here so that they're select, selected from the previous step. I'm going to go back up to the edit menu and I'm going to go to auto blend layers and now it's going to take these nine layers and stack them together into one photo and let's see what happens here. Now this would be a uh, because it's this processor intensive, it would be good if you've closed other unnecessary applications on your computer. 
but my computer does this in a hurry. And look at that. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Now, the depth of field in this stacked uh, set of pictures goes from the first focus point to close to the last focus point. Now, you're going to notice that there are some uh, unusual effects, usually around the edges of the photo, but we'll take care of that crop in Aperture. Now, like everything that I do now, I save this. Now, I've saved this both as a layered file. It's pretty big. And I've also saved it as a flattened file, both of them Photoshop files. And um, I brought those back into um, Aperture. And uh, so there's the layered file. And um, there is the... Uh, um, flatten file. Now I do have to do something here. I'm going to go back and uh, revert to the original because I've cropped this down uh, so that it would be at my desktop, which you saw at the beginning of this tutorial. You'll notice that uh, the full frame here, this is a 3-2 image as the camera saw it, uh, has some odd artifacts around the edges. And so if I wanted to keep the 3-2 ratio, I go to my crop tool, set 3-2, and then what I'm going to do is cut out of this picture the best part of it. Now, if I had done a few more photos, I would have a broader depth of field back there, but um, for the purposes of demonstration, this is going to work. And I'm going to hit Enter, and now I have a crop. And so there's the photo. It took these nine photos, ranging in um, from focus close to focus uh, medium far, and I ended up with a picture that looks like that. I think that this is almost magic. Very cool. Uh, imagine a flower or some other macro um, thing where you cannot get a broad enough depth of field. Use focus stacking when you take the pictures and then use the magic of Photoshop CS6 to do this. Anyway, that's how this works. Thanks for listening.